Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we got this awesome example program running. So, that's great. That means we can actually make progress towards making our game. We can take our first steps on our journey of game development. But, you might have noticed there's something a little bit weird about this example program. So, let's say you just downloaded a new game. What's the first thing you do? Well, if I'm playing a new game for the first time, the first thing I need to do is figure out, well, what are the controls? So, let's do that for our example program. What are the controls for our example program? If I press the up arrow key, nothing happens. Down. Nothing happens. Left and right. Nothing happens. WASD. Nothing happens. Keyboard mash! Yeah, that never does much, does it? But still, nothing happens. So, this seems to be a problem. There aren't any controls in our game. In fact, there is only one key combination in our entire program that does absolutely anything at all. If I hold down the Alt key and then press F4, the program closes which might be a little bit more impressive if it wasn't a default operating system hotkey that works for literally every program ever. <laughs> so, yeah, this was going to be our first obstacle on our quest for games. Controls. How do we take user input and turn it into some action in our game? That is the topic of this video. Let's go. So, we have entered the source code. How do we determine what the user is pressing at any given moment? How can we say, hey, the user's currently pressing, I don't know, the Q key? Yeah, like this window just determined. Unfortunately, the way this is handled is from the operating system. Specifically, the operating system handles it by events. It'll have an event that says, hey, an event has just happened, and this event happens to be the user has pressed this key, or it has released this key, or the user has clicked this mouse button, or released this mouse button, so forth and so on. You get the idea. And because that comes from the operating system, it's platform dependent. Which unfortunately means our input code, to some extent, is also going to have to be platform dependent. So how do we do this? Well, one way we could do it is we could say, okay, we'll go into this existing code, into the platform dependent section, we know that SDL handles that particular part of platform dependence, so we'll go into SDL, and we'll do something with one of these SDL classes, and that'll handle the input. Well, that's a bad idea for several reasons. One, the idea of this existing code is it's already written and we don't have to mess with it too much, so ideally we wouldn't mess with this if we can help it. And secondly, SDL isn't some all-encompassing oracle of platform dependence. There's plenty of platforms and operating systems, even if they aren't exactly the most common, that aren't handled by SDL. And we, if we want to use one of those platforms for some reason, we wouldn't want our entire input code to be absolutely worthless because, hey, we built it on SDL. So we're not going to deal with that. We're going to write something entirely different. What we're going to do is we're going to abstract these events a little bit. So I'm going to go to the core, just as a place to organize it, and I'm going to create a new class. It's going to be iApplicationEventHandler. You might already be able to see where I'm going with this. But yeah, so first off, the usual setup for C++, we want to do pragma, whoops, pragma once, so that we don't have the compiler processing the file multiple times. We're going to want to include our common.hpp so we have access to the common stuff in this code base. And we're going to create our class. It's going to be called class i application event handler. There we go. We're going to have the public section of the class and the private section of the class. There we go. Basic setup. And that's going to be like an interface. We're not going to have any implementation here. We're just going to specify a few methods that we can implement in all our different platform dependent code. And we'll build our input system on top of this. 
So that way, the input doesn't care what platform our input code is. Our, excuse me. The actual, it doesn't care what platform the actual input is coming from. It just needs to know, hey, this is the interface, and the interface is saying this. So I'm going to create a constructor for this that does absolutely nothing. I'm going to create a virtual destructor for this that also does absolutely nothing. This way we don't run into any bizarre destructor issues if one of the subclasses of this needs to manage resources for some reason. And because we have a virtual destructor, we also want a null, copy, and assign operator for this particular class. Whoops. I've created a macro for that so that we don't have to write the same boilerplate code every time this comes up. And yeah, this way, we again, we don't end up accidentally leaking resources if for some reason a subclass does something with this. So that takes care of all the boilerplate. Now we need the actual functions. So, what events might we want to handle? Because there's actually a lot of events that the operating system can throw at us. But, for now, really, there's only one type of event that we care about, and that is the input events. So we're going to create those, and we'll worry about other types of events later on if they become necessary. So I'm going to create a virtual void on key down. And this is going to take in an unsigned 32-bit integer for just some code for which key is down. And it's also going to take in a boolean is repeat. And it's going to, by default, have no implementation. And yeah, the idea of this is really straightforward. If I press a single key, then is that. But if I hold the key down, at some point it catches on and just repeats the event a whole bunch. So this allows us to distinguish between those two types of events, between just pressing a key in isolation and an extra key press that the computer has generated because I'm holding the key down. And I'm also going to want on key up with the same parameters. And really, the rest of the events are pretty similar. So I want on mouse down. So this is going to have an integer for the mouse button this time. And we don't have to worry about repeat mouse buttons with the mouse, thankfully. But we do have to worry about an 8-bit integer, an unsigned 8-bit integer, telling us how many clicks. Is it a double click, triple click, quadruple click, all the way up to a 256 or 255 click, which I think is going to be enough for our purposes. So there we go. Mouse up, same parameters. And those are pretty much our inputs, aside from one last thing, which is on mouse move, which tells us, hey, where is the mouse? So we're going to care about the mouse position x and an int 8 for mouse position y. And we're also going to care, sorry, int 8, what am I doing? <laughs> a 32-bit integer for mouse position x and y, and a 32-bit integer for the delta x and, sorry, int 32, delta y. And that tells us, this tells us how much the position has changed from the last mouse position. So we know where the mouse position is right now, and also how much the mouse has moved during this mouse move event. And really, this is all we care about. This is our application event handler. So now that we have this interface, there's two things we need to do. One, we need to feed operating system events through this particular interface. And two, we need to build our game's input system on top of this interface so that it doesn't depend on the operating system itself. So I'm going to start by just feeding the operating system events through the interface. So unfortunately, this will require us to go into platform to SDL and do some slight modifications. There's, alas, no way around it. So in SDL application.hpp, I'm going to go to the process messages function, and I'm going to add a parameter for I application event. Actually, I can just copy and paste it. Why am I typing? So yeah, I'm going to add a parameter for this. And we're going to pass by reference. So that way we aren't copying the entire interface every time, which probably wouldn't even work to begin with. So event handler is what I'm going to call it. And there. And we do need to add and include for i application event handler so that this file actually knows about it. So there we go. And the rest is in the CPP file, so under Process Messages. 
So I'm actually going to shuffle my screen around a little bit. I'm going to... There we go. So this is going to be my reference for what I'm trying to implement. And this is big because this is what I'm actually working with. So there's a few different events. As you can see, we already have a while loop that's pulling all the events from the operating system. So at this point, it's a matter of knowing the SDL documentation and knowing which SDL events are the ones that will give us the information we want and which parameters of those events will feed the correct parameters of these. So that's all this is. This is the point of just knowing what the SDL documentation is. So I'm going to have SDL key down and SDL key up and SDL mouse button down and SDL mouse button up. What am I doing? <laughs> I delete button to replace down, that's great. Mouse button up. And finally, a mouse motion event. How do I know these are the right events? Again, just knowing, reading the documentation. That's where I found out all these events correspond to what I'm interested in. So, I'm going to go ahead and add a break to them because they're going to be complete by themselves. We're not going to want to fall through cases. Yeah, at this point we just need to... Oh. I almost forgot. Here we actually want the i application event handler as a reference called event handler. Yeah, we need to actually, you know, we modified the header of this method. We need to modify it so we know about the parameter here. And yeah, we're just going to take the event handler and we'll call on key down with the correct parameters. In this case, again, you have to look at the parameters in the documentation. So this is just knowing the documentation. E.key.keysim dot scan code gives us the key code. I know it's weird, but again, you just have to read the documentation. That's all this is. So e dot key dot, let's see, what is the repeat? I believe there's a repeat, and if I know this is not equal to zero, that tells me whether or not I'm repeating. Yeah, because I believe e dot key dot repeat is the number of repeats. If it's zero, well, we're not, it's not a repeat. It's an original key press. If it's one or greater, well, we know that this is indeed a key repeat, so that fulfills that parameter. Cool. On key up, same parameters. We don't even need to change anything. Mouse button down, uh, different parameters. So what I want is e.mouse.button, that's the mouse button, and finally e.mouse.clicks is the number of clicks. So that one's relatively easy to implement. It's really, there's a direct correspondence in SDL. So, same sort of thing for mouse up, just change the method. And last, but not least, the mouse motion. So event handler dot on mouse move. This is a motion event, so e dot motion dot x gives us a position, e dot motion dot y gives us the y position, e dot motion dot x rel gives us the amount it's changed, e.motion.yrel gives us the amount of changed on y. So there you go, that's it. This might seem bizarre and confusing, but like I said, this is just a matter of knowing what the SDL documentation says and what events correspond to what. So yeah, there's not much ingenuity here. <laughs> Good news! Now that we're sending real events through this interface, we should be able to handle some basic control. Nothing fancy, because we haven't written our actual game control yet. That's going to be coming up next. But we should be able to yeah, just do something basic. Do something like, hey, we pressed something, something moves. So I'm going to create an implementation of this. It's going to be very quick and dirty. I'm going to call this, it's going to be called temp event handler. Extends from public I application event handler. We don't actually need no copy and assign. We don't need anything other than key up and down, because I'm not going to be handling it. And we don't need a destructor. So this is temp event handler. We're going to, sure, just go ahead and expand these out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this very basic. I'm going to have a bool, key down, starts off equal to false. If any key is down at all, key down equals true. If any key is released at all, key down is false. Very basic, but, you know, it gets the job done. So I'm going to go full screen with this, So because we don't need to see anything else right now. I'm going to scroll down through the crazy mess of our initial run app. We're definitely going to organize this at some point. 
Yeah, I'm just going to go down to right where the application is running. Temp event handler, event handler. If I can ever... There we go. And I'm going to pass this by reference. So right now we're not responding to it, but we should at least be able to compile with our new thing. So I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal, and I'm going to make and run. You can use whatever your build process is. And excellent, we have an error. No matching function for, right, we're not passing address of event handler. So that should be a quick fix of that. We just need to pass the event handler itself. E dot mouse interesting. So one moment, I was pretty, pretty sure that was the correct thing, but yeah, one moment. Ah, and it turns out that SDL calls all of its mouse events not mouse, but button for some reason. So where we have e dot mouse dot button, yeah, we're just going to replace mouse with button. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't make the most sense to me, but you know, that's just what it calls it. So now if I make and run, hey, everything works. We can press buttons, nothing crashes. Cool. So our next step is to build no, just something. Make it do something in response to this. And actually, first of all, I'm going to reduce the number of instances because I know that's causing some lag for some people. And you know what? Sure. So if event handler dot key down, then we're going to update this transform matrix array. And if not, we should. So we start with nothing. If I hold a key down, we get that. If I release a key, everything stops moving. If I press again, it updates again. Stop moving. So yeah, not the most exciting thing in the world, but you know what? We actually have our application responding to keys. And by the way, any key does it. So we can just key mash and yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Now we have our application, or game really, <laughs> actually responding to events. It's not much of a game yet, but we're getting there. We have our game responding to input so how do we actually handle input in a more general way, in a, more, in a way that's more friendly to games, in a way that we could say, hey, this key is down, I want this game object to respond to the event. Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you in the next video.